Okay, so because we are, believe it or not, we are still in the man's world in real estate, right? I want you to remove feelings. So from now on, you're not going to be like, I don't know how I feel about that. There's no feelings. It's just math. It's as simple as just numbers. So every time you're trying to decide, should I do this, should I not, break it down to numbers. The numbers don't have feelings, right? It will tell you exactly if it's worth your time or not. So let me tell you about a very expensive load of laundry. Here's a story of that. So in my fifth year of real estate, I got myself a real estate coach, a thousand bucks an hour. I'm a mom, I am the best multitasker on the face of the year. Raise your hand if you feel like you can run a load of laundry and have a coaching call and kids running around and feed the dog at the same time. <laughs> right? So that's what I thought too. And I was like, I can do this. So I'm on my coaching call, thousand bucks an hour, when I had no business of paying a thousand bucks an hour. I seriously didn't have the thousand dollars I paid. And I'm on this thousand dollar coaching call and I am literally running a load of laundry. And my coach says in the background, what are you doing? I'm like, um, running a load of laundry while I'm talking to you? She says, what's that? She says, well, that's a very expensive load of laundry. I was like, what the heck does she mean by that? Right? So think about it this way. Am I truly paying attention? Am I taking notes? Am I going back and following up with those notes and making sure that I implement what I learned? Did I actually learn something? Or did I waste my own time? And my own very, very hard earned money, right? Because a thousand dollars at the time was a of money for us a month. That was like our mortgage payment. And I had no business spending our mortgage payment money and getting smarter while I'm not paying attention. So what I want you to do from now on is look at the hourly rate of your time and do not multitask, do not do anything else that does not make you that money. So today we are going to figure out what is your hourly rate. So from now on, all of these things that you see on the screen, the laundry, the walking your dog, the grocery shopping, the buying, closing gifts, and all of those things, if you can justify doing that, you should continue. You'll know what your hourly rate is. Next thing, many of you may feel like you're not in control of your commission. You're not in control of the money that you're going to make this year. Let me break it to you. You are absolutely in control of your money. So what happens, most of us here, I assume, we do social media marketing, right? So what happens when you post a $200,000 listing? What kind of buyers are you going to find? What price range are those buyers in? $200,000, right? You're not gonna have someone looking at your $200,000 listing when they're looking for a 2.7 million waterfront. Right? They're not gonna click it because they're not interested in it. So whatever you're going to post is what you're going to get. God bless you. Now the same thing with the 500,000, right? You post it, you get $500,000 buyers. Now, is the work the same? Is the commission the same? So is it in control? Is it in your control to control your income? It's in direct correlation what you're going to post. If you post a $200,000 house, you're going to find a $200,000 buyer. If you post a million dollar listing, you're gonna find a million dollar buyer, or two or 10, right? So write this down from now on, control your own commission. Because the work is the same. So let's calculate your hourly rate on the buyer side and on the listing side. Because most of you, I'm assuming, are still there. Actually, let me ask you this. How many people have removed themselves from chasing the next commission and their team leads? One, two, three. Awesome. Three? Did I miss anyone? Oh, four. <laughs> me too. Okay, so congratulations. For the rest of us, right, about 90% of the room, we are going to work on that. So let's assume that an average, usually I do the math with $9,000 commission, average, because many of you are from the West Coast, and you know, a million dollars is a candle for you. <laughs> um, we're gonna do the math, I know, a million dollars for me is like seven bedrooms, two bed, 160 you know, feet waterfront, all sports lake with a finished basement, seven fireplaces, two dogs, right? A nanny, all comes with it. Um, but, Let's do the math with 15,000. So let's assume your average commission is 15,000 on the buy side. How many hours do you feel like you work with the buyer? And now I'm thinking, right, initial phone call consultation. You're going to meet and show them houses. You're going to sell them one and write a contract, right? Hopefully gets accepted with the whole multi multi-bidding situation. Then you're gonna go back for inspection. Then you, know you forgot to measure for the fridge, right? So you're gonna go back one more time. And then you're gonna show up at the final walkthrough and the closing. And in between, you might maybe negotiate 30 minutes to an hour. 
right? So I'm, I'm calculating 12 hours with the buyer. On the buy side, you spend more time, right? So if we do that, the math comes out at 1,250 bucks an hour. So every time you talk to a buyer, that's what it's called. That's how much money you should be making in that hour. If your average commission is 15,000. So now let's do the math very quick. Take your pen and paper, write down your average commission. And if you don't know your average commission, you can line up right there, I will spank you. <laughs> you should know your average commission. You cannot grow the numbers unless you know the numbers. I cannot possibly make you more money. So we all have an internal GPS, guys. It knows where you're at, and it will know where you're going if you tell it where you're going, and it will give you multiple options to get there. It's gonna be like, do you wanna walk it? Do you wanna ride a bike? How about public transportation? <laughs> Right? It's going to give you options, but you need to know where the heck you're at. It cannot take you to the next place unless we know where we're at. So right now we're going to calculate very, very quick. Let's do this very quick. Buy said commission, what's your average commission? Is it 7,500? Is it 23,000? Is it 2,900? Whatever your average price range is, right? Write it down very quick, divide it by 12 hours. So divide it by 12, and that will be your buy side average hourly rate. I'm assuming you have it. On the listing side though, we really don't spend as much time, I don't, with sellers, right? Initial phone consultation, I go out for the listing appointment and I email out the docs, they sign it, we'll send out the photographer. I used to go out to the listing, I don't do that anymore, right? But when I did, I went out and met the photographer, I did some posts about it, I did the negotiations, market negotiations, right? And I showed up at Cozy. Maybe I talked to the appraiser if I had to, right? So I would say seven hours is pretty reasonable on the listing side, do you feel like? So write down your average commission on the listing side and divide it by the seven hours if you feel like, you know, if you feel like you work less or more, use that number, but I think seven is about reasonable. So now with this math, listing side is $2,143 versus buy side $1,250, simple math, Right? No feelings. I'm not asking how you feel. Would you like to make, how do you feel about making $1,250 an hour versus making $2,143? I would assume everybody would take the $2,143. Right? Because in that same hour that you're working, you want to make more money. So now that we know your hour rate, how much do you get paid when you check your emails? Does anybody say, like, oh, congratulations. LinkedIn, 947 messages, and I really only had to address four. Took me four hours. This is when I realized, guys, that I pay for this hair color, I'm not naturally stupid, right? Accident brown hair, I can get away with murder. That's why I do it. It's hundreds of dollars every time I do my hair, right? But when I did the math, I'm like, hold on a minute. 947 LinkedIn messages took me Almost four hours to get through it. To be like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited that we connected. Oh my gosh, we're in the industry. Oh my gosh, let's talk. Oh my gosh, let's have coffee. Right? And I really only had four messages that I needed to address. That four hours, if I went and got myself a listing, somebody do the math for me. What would that be? 8,000, four, 600 bucks? Not, not that I didn't make a penny. I lost $8,600. Because if I went and got myself, in those four hours, a listing, that's how much money I would have made. Right? So you will never, ever walk your dog again. I'm just kidding. Um, my dog does get walked, and sometimes when I do have the extra time, I do walk my dog. You just don't have to be the one doing it every time. So what I'm trying to say, all of these things are going to have to get done. They just don't need to get done by you. So let's work smarter, not harder. First thing you should hire should be a transaction coordinator. Um, raise your hand if you're, actually let's do that. Raise your hand if you're not using a transaction coordinator. I would say it's a 50-50, that's, that's pretty big. So now that we know that the average commission is about $15,000, a nationwide transaction coordinator will charge you somewhere between three to five hundred dollars. They kind of range. So if <laughs> how many hours?
hours. I shouldn't ask you this. How many hours does it take you to push paper from start to finish? Somebody raised their hand over there. Can you tell me, what would you say, how many hours does it take you to take a client from day one to closing? How many hours do you like? Oh, shoot, I have to send this to the title company. Oh, shoot, I have to send this to the lender. Oh, gosh, I didn't get back to so-and-so. Um, throw me a number. Two or three. Two or three hours. So if you're on the listing side, you have your number. Multiply it very quick so you can see it with your own eyes what it's costing you to push paper. So tell me the number. So if it was three hours on the listing side, what is it, what is it costing you by pushing your own paper? Do you have the number? Probably $4,500. What would it actually cost to get a TC? Three seventy-five. Good job. So, simple math. Should I be spending time that's costing me forty-five hundred dollars, or should I pay three seventy-five, and I only pay it if and when the deal closes? Because I'm a realtor, I don't get paid unless the deal closes, right? So my TC doesn't get paid unless you get me to the closing table. It's that simple. So if we work on it for four weeks and poof goes bye bye. Well, I'm not making a commission, you're not making, you're not getting paid. So transaction coordination, guys, it's a no-brainer. Not only that, but can you charge a transaction fee in your state? So what I mean by that, I'm in Michigan, I charge a 6% on the listing side, plus a 4.95 transaction fee. On the buy side, I charge a 4.95 transaction fee to the buyer. Can you charge a transaction fee in your state? So if you charge 4.95, and it's costing you three seventy-five. Are you still a hundred percent plus commission? Yeah, you still made like hundred twenty bucks extra, and you gain yourself three hours. What is your name in the blue shirt? Laura. Laura. Hi, Laura. So, um, in those three hours, if you promise me that you're not sipping mimosas, right, poolside, but well, you're actually going to go get yourself another listing. What are the chances that in three hours, if you do what you do to get those listings, right, from your social media? But if I found on social media for three hours, what do you think are the chances that you would get a listing? Uh, well, I don't do social media. But whatever you do to get, yeah, whatever you do to get your business. Whatever you do to get your business. If you did that for three hours, what are the chances that you would get a listing? Very high. What's your average listing side commission? Okay, so 12 grand. Do you charge 3%? Assuming, yeah. So, if I told you, give me $395 and I give you 12 grand, would you do it? Uh, can I do it again? Can I do it twice a day? And every color, right? So you have to think in numbers from now on because you are in business. So from now on, first hire TC. You should never push paper ever again. If you don't know where to hire a TC, you can always go to gogoswithkim.com. Mine are trained in every single state and they've been in business for a very long time. We charge, I think, 300 on the buy side, um, I think it's 350 on the listing side, and 450 if you're, if you're dual-sided. If you don't have your own TC, you can hire one of mine, okay? So let's do this exercise. I need you to have a piece of paper. Yes. Yes, every state. Yeah, they're licensed in every state. And they're trained. I've been working with them forever. Okay, you ready? Let's do this exercise. I'm going to teach you. You're like, okay, go, go, but how do I hire an assistant? Because that's next, right? First hire TC. Get that paper off your plate. It's not worth your time. The next hire is going to be a virtual assistant or an assistant. And in order to figure out how you're going to do that, I want you to have a fresh page of paper, a blank. I want you to put on, draw a line in the middle, straight down. I'm going to give you some time to do this exercise because you need to actually take the steps to see what are you actually doing all day. Okay, so now on the left hand side of the top, I want you to put in red light. So line in the middle, straight down in the middle. Top left, red light, top right, green light. Red light means you can stop doing it right now. Stop it, red light. Green light means I'm it for the rest of my life. Okay, so now that you have that line in the middle, 
And I'm going to ask you to walk around with this piece of paper where right now you're just going to do a quick exercise for about two minutes. But for the next week, you're going to walk around with a clipboard, literally, like the baby on the head, right? You remember that one? You're going to take the clipboard, you're going to walk around with it. If you're left-handed, you do it this way. If you're right-handed, you do it this way. And you're going to write down every step you take from the moment you brush your teeth, when you feed the dog, when you take your kids to school, when you put clothes on, when you make your first phone call, when you start doing cold calling, when you make your social media posts, when you respond to emails, when you check your LinkedIn, when you create your addendums, when you do your showings, when you, you name it, everything that you do. So right now, what I want you to do is literally start writing. Red light means you can stop doing it right now because it can be done by somebody else. Green light means I'm it. Can I hire somebody to brush my teeth? No. I'm gonna brush my teeth. Unless it's Eddie Murphy coming to America, right? Maybe one day, right? Uh, but until then, I'm brushing my own teeth. Actually, I was like, is there have to work today? I'll tell you the story. I wake up this morning, I wanted my coffee so bad. I'm so tired, I didn't wanna come downstairs to get it. And I was like, I still didn't make it in this life. Because if I made it, my assistant would be right there. Here's your flat white with oat milk. One pop of hazelnut. Good morning, right? That's why I work so hard, because I want that. I don't think that I would freaking feel like doing that one day coffee, nicely, freshly, food, just fly down my nice day. <laughs> Wouldn't you feel like you freaking made it in life? <laughs> I'm like, I've made it in life. So that's what I work for. Okay, let's get the bread like me like that. So start thinking of all of the things that you do, right from the negotiation to the marketing to the writing your addendums to walking your dog to everything. So for the next two minutes, start doing red light, green light. Everything that pops into your head that you actually do day to day. Like think of all of the DMs. Think of like getting back to your kids' teachers. Like doing the dishes. I'm so proud to say, I couldn't tell you the last time I ran a load of laundry. I don't know if I know how to do it anymore. Everything. So anything that pops in your head, red light means you can stop doing it right now, you can hire it out. Green light means you're it. So for example, my social media will never be red light. I will never, ever, 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 no matter how busy I get, would hire it out. Because that's how I make money. It's built around me. Nobody can be me. Now, can I hire out certain portions of that? Um, and the laptop, I'm like, um, the three. screen died, sorry. Um, can I hire out certain portions of that? Absolutely. Like, I can hire myself a designer, right, who can design all the pretty things that I post. I can have my assistant be like, hey, can you send me the wine link real quick? They'll send it to me so I don't have to dig it up, so I can just copy paste, make my post, right? Um, so you have to think of however your business is built. Some things, thank you so much, some things cannot be hired out. If it's built right around you, that will never have, that, you, that part you could never hire out. Everything else you can. Okay. You got the hang of it? You got the hang of it? Okay. I want you to walk around with a clipboard for the next week every single day and every step you take. You are going to put it in the red light or green light. By the end of the week, guess what you have? The new job description <laughs> for a new assistant. You're gonna be like, what is she gonna do? Everything that's in your red light. And you're gonna know exactly what that person is going to be doing because you spelled it out. This is what I need help with. This is what I should not be doing. Now, there are a few, few categories for that, right? It's not that I can't run a load of laundry. Am I capable of running a load of laundry? Absolutely. Should I be running a load of laundry? Is that my time best spent? No. Am I good at bookkeeping? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Shoot me now. Does it have to get done? Do I have to pay taxes in this country? Absolutely. Does it have to be get done by me? No. And then there's also things that you just hate doing or truly you suck at it. And it has to get done. Those things just have to come off your plate. You have to hire somebody who is really good at it. So if you, never, if you don't know your personality type, the next homework I want you to do is a DISC assessment. D-I-S-C. And in my, I think I have two free links if you go to googlebeck.com links. I'm pretty sure I have them in there. But Tony Robbins has, a, has an awesome one for free. So if you put in Tony Robbins DISC assessment or free DISC assessment, you'll find it. If you've never taken one, you need to take one because you're going to be like, oh my gosh, this is so like me. So I'm a very high D. Well, I'm actually going to get two different personality types. I'm almost like bipolar. <laughs> when you look at my desk, you're like, whoa. Um, so you have your natural, and then you have the business that you adapt to. 
is how you react to certain things in business. So my desk is I'm a very high DNI, which means it's my rear on the highway, which means everybody knows my name. My S is like, yeah, S is me caring about others. It's right in the middle, I kind of do, kind of. I, and my C is non-existent, which means I don't sweat this small stuff. The whole perfection of like, I don't even know what that means. For me, it's close to not good enough, let's do it. So I don't have the detail-oriented stuff. So reading contracts on the listing side, I absolutely hate it. Because it's detail-oriented. And I need to pay attention. I'm like, oh my God, I'm just looking inside right here. <laughs> right? So when you see that personality things, then you're hiring out certain things is going to be very easy. The first assistant, I will tell you how it's going to go. You're going to interview them, and they're just like, you're like, oh my God, this is going to be so much fun. We're going to do work at Starbucks together, and then we can do shopping after. It's like, oh my God, this is going to be so awesome. Guess why you like them? Because they're just like you. Do you need another you? Or do you need somebody who has skills that you don't have? That's why you need to have the risk assessment done. Because when you see your own risk assessment, from now on, you will never hire through what? Feelings. We don't do feelings. Forget feelings from now on. So disk assessment, sorry, I talked too much. Um, so with your disk assessment from now on, how you are going to hire is that you are going to say, oh my gosh, I would love to interview you. Can you please take a disk assessment first? Send it to me. Based on your disk, I'll decide if you're a good candidate. I don't even interview them, guys, unless their disk is my polar opposite. So if I'm a high DNI and I hired another D, who's another dominant person, how would that go, you think? <laughs> would last about a week, right? And then their natural ability will come out. Some dominant personalities can reduce their dominancy when they have another dominant person, but your natural will always come out. After you start feeling comfortable, it's gonna start coming out, and that's when you're like, I hired my best friend and I have to fire her. That's why you don't hire your best friend. Not unless she has the traits, right? You look at this assessment, sorry, you don't have those. Right? So from now on, take a disc, hire off from a disc. Your polar opposite should be your first hire. After that, when you get familiar with the discs, when you have 30, 40, 50 hires, right, and it's for a different type of job that you need them for, you're going to look at their disc, and it's when you get familiar with it, you realize these dominant. So if I'm looking for a salesperson, who do you think I'm gonna get? If I'm looking for a school person, who do you think I'm gonna hire? High D. If I'm looking for like a team go-go mama, somebody who's gonna take care of all of our agents, I'm gonna hire a high C, uh, a high S. A high S would take care of others. They put other people before they put themselves. A high C is detail-oriented. So if I'm looking for somebody to crunch my numbers every single month, am I going to hire a D or a C? A high C. So that's why you need to know these, because then you'll never have to fire again. I couldn't tell you the last time I fired someone. It's the best, amazing, the most amazing feeling. So now that you know all of the job duties, because you kind of wrote things down, right? Now we have to figure out, is this a VA or is this an assistant? So VA means virtual assistant. Assistant is in person. So let's figure out. So now look at your list on the left hand side and the uh, right hand side, right? So now you want to look at the one that's red light you can stop doing. You want to look at the red light section and look at, can a virtual assistant walk your dog? Can a virtual assistant run a load of laundry? Can a virtual assistant make sure you took your vitamins and you drink your water? And you ate today? No. So I literally have an assistant who makes sure I eat today. That's her job. Make sure I drink my water, I take my vitamins, because I love what I do, so for me it's not work. So when I start, I'm so freaking excited, and the next thing I know it's nine o'clock at night, I'm like, holy shit, I didn't even do anything today. So getting a virtual assistant and getting a personal assistant is two totally different caliber. That's why you need to have the red light, green light. Because now you can separate what is an in-person job and what is an online job that can be done from absolutely anywhere. The difference is thousands and thousands of dollars. Raise your hand, and if you were a virtual assistant, you would work for me for $3.75 an hour. Any American, do you think you could find somebody in this country that would do that for you? What do you think someone in the US is gonna charge per hour? Right around 2025. So you're not gonna find someone that's a local assistant to do what a virtual assistant would do. Virtual assistant is much, much cheaper. So you're gonna do this exercise for a week, you're gonna take your red light, you're gonna divide it into two sections. The ones that can be done in person, for that you're gonna hire an in-person assistant, 
or house assistant, or personal assistant, or executive assistant, depending on what the job duties are, right? And then the rest will be hired by VA. And by one VA, I mean like 40, in my case, eventually, right? You'll get there. Okay, so now that you know what those job duties are, and what kind of assistance you need, you can hire them and upwork yourself. You can find them, hire them, train them, or you can hire them and go with bootcamp.com again. All of my VAs are trained in everything that I do. So you can hire them trained, or you can hire them and train them yourself. If you hire them and find them yourself, go to Upwork, right? It's down, Upwork.com. So in that, you are going to literally take your red light exercise. If you knew, actually, if you need an in-person, you're going to go to Care.com. That's where I get mine. So an in-person assistant, I go to Care.com. An online VA assistant, I go to Upwork. So if you want to find them, train them, hire them, and do all of that stuff, right? Go to Upwork, do it yourself. If you want them to be fully trained, there are certain things that you want them to do for you, which I have about 30 different, 40 probably now, different virtual assistants. In a second, I'll show you some of the job uh, things that we use them for or they help us up with. Um, you can go to gogoswithkim.com. Now, don't tell anyone yet because I have not announced it yet. It's on a waiting list. So it's first come, first served. If you're on the waiting list, you get the first round, um, access to the first round of VAs. I have not made it public yet. It's little late. Um, my digital marketer said yes me yesterday. What time do you need this done by? So it's clearly not done, 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 done. Um, so it's a waiting list for now for two more days. Then we're going live. When we go live, then it's open to the public. Then it's first come, first Okay. Here are some of the assistants that you should have. The first one I, I started with, virtual. The first one I started with is executive assistant. That's my Mariana, and she's in Brazil. I originally. She wanted to get paid 450 bucks, listen to this, a month. It's one transaction fee on one listing or buy site for me because I charge 495. I was like, uh, sign me up? Where's the catch, right? So she's from Brazil. A um, Couple of things about virtual assistants, you can get them from anywhere in the world, right? I don't like people to work in the middle of the night. So if you're getting someone from the east side of the world, they're going to be working in the middle of the night. Also, there's this thing called cultural differences. So I have hired from many different countries and some just didn't work out. Because the way I work and the way I am, I, when God was giving out the sugar coating abilities and the fluffy things, I skipped the line. <laughs> um, so, and I got in the other line a little one too many times, right? So with that being said, I need people that can put up with me and some cultures can't. So it's just not for me. I'm not gonna try to change someone, right? I'm not in the business of that. So I want you to be like, pop up, you're doing this today. Um, Brazil, as, so Mariana is my executive assistant from Brazil. She's the most amazing thing since sliced bread. Literally, I just messaged her and asked her, would you please make me a dry, what is that, dry here, dry place? It's like five minutes from here. So they wrote her right here. She's like, it's done. Make sure you go to this address because there's another one here to the hotel. Five minutes from the hotel. I'm like, thank Jesus, I made it. Um, so things that I hate doing, I have an online shop. I hate scheduling things. I hate the whole calendar, but am I available now? How about Tuesday at two? Like, how about no, I can't do that. I already have an appointment. How about none of that? I don't answer any email. I couldn't tell you the last the only well, instead of me going down the list of the things I don't do, I'll tell you the list of the things I do do. I check my Instagram. That's the only place you're gonna get me in person everywhere else I have VAs. And text messages. And my cell phone number is nowhere out there for the public to have. It's not on yard signs, which write this out. If you do not have a smartphone number on your yard signs, you're kidding yourself. You can't capture anybody's information. So first thing you should do, if you don't have a smartphone number through your KV core or some sort of a CRM program that you're already using, get one. It's like 29 bucks a month, it's worth every penny. Your cell phone number should not be out there. There's a lot of weird people. That's another story I'll tell you later. Over drinks of the um, good morning pictures I used to get. And let me tell you, it was a different head in the picture. <laughs> if you know what I mean. So this is how I fixed that problem. I said, okay, if you send me one more, I swear I will post it and tag you. <laughs> now we got another one. Problem solved. Thank you, Jordan. Um, so with the executive assistant thing, they are going to remove everything from your plate, like all of these scheduling emails, DMs, all of that stuff, right? If somebody wants to schedule for a podcast, all of those things. The next one you should have is a social media assistant. So with that, they never, ever, ever, ever post for me, but they check all of my DMs. First of all, do not ever give them password. You make them admins. 
through Facebook. They cannot do certain things. They can never delete my account. Uh, another thing, do you have two-step authentication on all of your social media? If you don't, get it done today. If not, you can be hacked very easily. I could hack you by noon. Right yes, right yeah, now. right now. I could seriously hack you in two minutes. Okay, so get two-step authentication. If you don't know what that is, that means even if someone knows the password and enter it correctly, you still get a text message with the code that you have to enter to get it. Next thing, um, so social media assistant, they design things for me, they remind me of things, right? Like if I do all of my affiliate income, like every Tuesday I do an affiliate, right? So it's sometimes my Amazon store, sometimes a CRM program, sometimes bamboo sheets, whatever that I am selling, you all selling. They create it for me and they remind me and they send me the link. So all I need to do is plug the image, plug the link, I'm done. It takes me two seconds. Versus going on Kindle, designing it myself, finding the link, somewhere in my affiliate link. You know, like it's just work, but it's not worth your time. The next one is the design. They design everything. The numbers, you have to type your numbers. If you don't track it, you can grow it. So my numbers are, is done by Saeed, and he's from Pakistan. It's a guy, in my opinion, just my personal opinion. Um, guys are better with numbers than most of the girls. Just my opinion, okay? So I hired a guy, his name is Saeed, and he's in Pakistan. So he does work at night, but he's done that his whole life. So he's totally, that's his daytime. He's like during the day, right? So to me, it's very really weird, and I feel that every time when he's coming to meetings and it's two o'clock in the morning, but he's amazing at what he does. He does all of our trackers, all of the celebrations that we do in Team Gogo, all of the um, gifts that we send out, all of the production numbers, how many, what's the percentage of the buy side. I wanted to make money in multiple different ways and building the empires. Like, I watched Grant Cardone. He started in real estate, never as an agent, right? But with real estate investing, and look at him today. Why can I do that? I have balls. Right? So, some of the ways that we can make money, and it's passive, right? If you're thinking, why is commissions passive? Because I work for it. Because you don't want to work for it anymore. Eventually, you want your commissions to be passive, meaning somebody else working for it, you're making money. That's called a team. Referrals. Is that active income? Well, if you consider the one phone call you have to make, yes, it's active, but you're making 25% of somebody's commission. They technically work. If you're doing social media, right, guys? You're going to have so many referrals that you can just be like, I'm so sorry, I'm not in Tennessee, right? But I have an amazing business partner in Tennessee, let me make a recommendation, can I have your email address? That's all I need to say. They literally give it to me on Instagram. And then I call you one of you, Rockstar's agent, and be like, do you want to take it 25%? And you say, I'm so freaking lonely, right? So referrals should be a huge chunk of your income, passive. Affiliates and link If you're doing social media right, guys, I'm not only making money on commissions. I have like 29 different revenues of income. And many of them may pay me a little bit here, a little bit there. Amazon, for example, you can have an Amazon store. They'll pay you anywhere from two to 10% of things that you recommend. So I could be recommending a deck furniture to you, and you use my link from Instagram. I took you off of Instagram in a store and I took you to Amazon, right? You might not buy the deck furniture, but you're like, oh shit, I need dog food. And you're gonna order dog food. And I just made 5% on your dog food. I don't even know who's ordering or what they're ordering. Sometimes it's books, sometimes it's vitamins, sometimes it's bed sheets. And I'm in real estate. So keep that in mind, affiliate income. If you need to, I'll be in a second, I'll show you mine. Ownership and staff. If you're planning on spending, I'm just making sure it's him, it doesn't sleep on me. If you're planning on spending 10, 20, 30 years, or if you already spent 10 years in real estate, right? Like I did. If you walked out on, your, on the door today, what do you have to show for? Let me take a wild guess. Some pending deals and a box full of glass trophies. Can you retire on that? Can you send your kid to college? How about down payment on your second home in Florida? Right? No. So I was like, hold on a minute. If I spend 10 years of my career here, and I'm not going anywhere, I'm going to spend another 23 years, I want something to show for. I want to be like, I did this, besides slaving over here, because over here. that's the other thing. Many of you are like, yeah, but I'm just going to save my money. Realtors suck at saving. <laughs> raise your hand if any of you in this room made it to, well, I know a couple of you did. Um, actually, raise your hand truly that you became a multimillionaire by saving your commissions. Hmm, weird. <laughs> 
So even ownership, right? You want things that they give to you that you can't spend today, that is going to be there for you when you're ready to retire, when you no longer have the energy to chase that next commission. Now, when you go to like a Keller model with profit share, um, usually well, raise your hand if you don't make sure that you order like as you're ending, right? You're gonna order a new printer and you are going to do this and do that and spend some of the profit, right? Get yourself a marketing class or whatever you wanna spend money on because if not, you're going to give it to Uncle Sam in taxes. Well, what do you think uh, big companies do? Same thing. They're gonna re-carpet the office. They're gonna give so-and-so bonus. They're going to hire a new team lead. And there goes the profit. And then you're going to make $932 for bringing 42 agents in eight and a half months. So now that you know my hourly rate, which my hourly rate now is in the 4,000s an hour. But now that you know my hourly rate, was it worth talking to 42 agents and onboarding them all over the country to make $932? No. So if it's not worth it, stop doing it. It's really that simple. But you do have to find yourself multiple revenues of income. Commissions. Let's break this one down real quick. How am I doing on time? We have like 20 minutes. Awesome, okay. So we're gonna speed up the second half. So commissions, can it be passive? Absolutely. What's gonna happen? You're gonna lose half of your commission. Because usually, when you start a team, it happens at a 50-50 or 60-40. Listing side, I do 60-40, buy side, we do 50-50. So just keep that in mind. Why on the listing side more? Because you have more expenses. Yard signs, broker opens, all that stuff, okay? You're probably thinking, yeah, but if I do that, I'm gonna have overhead, I'm gonna have to have an office, and I'm gonna have to have stuff, and you're gonna have to order, you know, those home lines and all of those things. I don't have any of that, guys. Guess what I have today? Two printers, a black and white, and a color. Um, there's a thing I usually like to go on, but this is not my phone, but I show you how I work. This is my office. This is where I run multiple multi-million dollar businesses from. You do not need to have a physical space. You do not need to have expenses or overhead in order to have a team. We feel like we do because that's how we always live. We went into an office and there was a team, right? But can your team work with Wi-Fi or cell service? Absolutely. Can you have your meetings on Zoom? Absolutely. Could they come to your house every Monday morning at 10 o'clock and that's your team meeting? Absolutely. Could you rent an office if you wanted to? Absolutely, but you don't have to. So I have a standard team, which at EXP means that me as a team lead is a 16,000 cap, but the agents on my team are 8,000 cappers or half cappers, which means I can icon and I can earn my cap back, they cannot. When an agent starts producing over 30 deals, they should be full cappers so they can earn you back. That's in their best interest. And hopefully they stay with you, right? Because with this model, they can. They do not have to leave your team to build a team. Not anymore. And that's the other thing. You're going to invest all the time. And all you're going to share your skills and your efforts and your secrets, right? And then six months, you're going to have two options. Six months in, if you're adding good, they use you. Because they learned what they had to learn. And if they suck, they stay. <laughs> but they suck. Right? So those used to be the options. With the EXP model, that's not the case anymore. I want you to please go and build a team by yourself. I will outdo myself. I will take you from a 4,000 cap to an 8,000 cap to a 16,000 cap to give your 16,000 back, and I will personally help you to build a team. That's the difference here. We have collaboration versus competition. It is a huge difference. It is my best interest to help you reach your goal because I don't make money unless you make money. And the same thing with everybody here. So that should be your best interest. You should never worry about another agent ever, ever, ever leaving your team again. Your skill, time, and effort invested into another human with a real estate license and a pulse will never go on, what's the word I'm looking for? You will get paid for it for the rest of your life. And here's the other thing too. You shouldn't just get paid for it for that one transaction or two or 10 that they do with you. Because if they do go out to be on their own, they continue doing transactions, right? Why shouldn't you get paid for that? Because you laid the foundation. You turned them into who they are today. So that's the awesome part when it comes to revenue share. So now, you can split your commissions at a 50-60%, and you're going to break down those numbers in a second. If they're not in your area and on your team, can you refer it out? Instead of making 60, 50%, you're gonna make 25. 
So if you make 25% on a referral and your average commission is 15,000, that's $3,750. But who are you gonna send it to? Someone in your downline. And so for that, you make an additional $525. If you don't know what to do with $525, I'll give you my memo. <laughs> So, affiliate income. Let's talk, oh, let's talk about this one really quick. We talked about all of those different links, how you can get paid, not just commission. Think of all of the services, the CRM programs, the companies, the this and that, everything that you promote, the, the calling systems, whatever that you use. Your credit card. I flew for free, guys, um, about 24 times last year. And I got upgraded to first class every time. So we talk about that in a second. So if you want to get a little bit of an idea of some of the ways that I get paid, just go to gogobecky.com or name.com, go to links, and you're going to see all of those companies that I so said promote. Every time you choose any of them, like this bracelet that I'm wearing, for example, it's an Invisiwear bracelet. It's a protection bracelet. If I push this button, I know your, your kid's face is up. Does it look like it's a bracelet? It's a charm, right? But it's for my security. So it has a button on the back, Every realtor should have this, or any public-facing salesperson, right? You buy push the button twice because what if someone's putting a gun to your head? Are you gonna be like, excuse me, let me call 911, right? Like it's not gonna work. So with this one, you just push the button twice. It sends your exact GPS location to five people plus calls 911 for you. It literally sends a, a, a physical thing on the map. This I promote because I wear all the time. I do never, ever, ever, ever promote anything that I don't personally love or use. Well, these things, right? So this one, what happens is when you purchase it, you'll get 10% off with my coupon, but I make 20% for you purchasing it. So it's like 200 and some odd dollars for the bracelet, I make 50 bucks. And I didn't know that you bought yourself a bracelet. So think of it um, this way. So spend some time on my list, get yourself some ideas of what are the things that I promote. You might be using totally different companies and just create your own affiliate link. And then get into the schedule of promoting those affiliates on a certain time, right? So I do mine on Tuesdays. Every Tuesday, I promote one of my affiliates and just continuously grows your business. Affiliate income can not only be things that you are going to um, make money on, but also save money on. So for example, my Delta credit card, right? And I just mentioned, if you're going to your credit card, there's a button called invite a friend. When you invite a friend, you're going to get 7,500 miles for free and they're going to get 75,000 miles for free. 7,500 miles, it's like a trip to Florida. Free, all I did is like, I prefer Delta guys when I fly, and I include my little link. You decide to get yourself a credit card with my link. I get 7,500 miles, you get 75,000, so I saved myself literally 24 trips last year, plus I got upgraded to first class. Multiply that with an average flight ticket of whatever, five, six hundred dollars, right? What is that? So you can make money by saving money. Does that make sense? So there are some services, for, for example, CRM, um, uh, Lion Desk is a CRM program that I like to use. I've never paid for it. From day one, I said, I'm going to bring you enough business that I want two things. I want mine for free, and I want affiliate income. And don't ever take an upfront cost. I want a lifetime. So that means that if you end up getting yourself a line desk account and you end up paying $25 every month, I want that $5 for every month you are going to stay with the company as long as you're going to stay with the company. So if 100 people pay me five bucks a month, that's $500. And all I did is told you once, about that CRM program. And you continue using it, because when you get a CRM program and they cancel it, two and a half years in, no, because your whole freaking database is in it, right? So those are systems that are going to stay with you for a very long time. So you should get paid as long as the client stays with that service. This is pulling layers so that, okay. So ownership and stock. We talked about this very quick. So if you're going to spend 20, 30 years of your career with the company, you should get paid for that. You should have something to show for 30 years from now. You could buy in, you could spend 250000 and buy yourself a Keller office, but that comes with expenses, overhead, liability. And uh, I don't know what is that's going to be worth 10 years from now. I don't know who on earth is going to buy a non-profitable office. So I wouldn't spend 250000 if I can't get that back out of there, if there's no guarantee so set. I don't like that, but if I can do it for free, would you do it? Absolutely. So you should get ownership in the business that you work in. The other thing is, we have here what's called an ICANN program. That was reason number one why I switched over, because it's one thing to have a reduced gap, right? I don't care what you reduce it to, can I get it back? So if I'm a badass rock star agent and I do 20, 30, 40, 50 deals a year, can you go into your brokerage today and be like, guys, 
I did 52 deals this year. You should give my cat back. You need to be at a brokerage if you're a producing agent where the numbers make sense. You need to be at a brokerage where you are 100% plus and have the ability to earn it back. Revenue share and profit share. Your bills come in here every month, right? Does your commissions come in on the clock, on the 18th, like your mortgage payment comes in every month on the freaking 18th? No, it doesn't. So I wanted to remove myself from the real estate roller coaster, and I wanted to have commissions, I wanted to have ownership, I wanted to have the ability to earn it back, and I wanted to have some sort of like, kind of like a salary. Like something that I know, even if I don't close this month, Plus, if you guys are in any seasonal real estate, like I am, I'm in Michigan. So I guarantee you, I don't care how top producing, I know we have some people from Minnesota. I don't care how top producing agent you are. Your February is not your August. It's just not. But, um, it, but does your mortgage company reduce your mortgage payment in February? No, they have the same freaking bills. So I wanted to have something that comes in. Not only that, but if you spent enough time in this industry, you're going to have agents that look up to you, and you're going to spend the time with them, because you love this, right? And we all love helping another human being. You need to get paid for the time and effort, because if I spend an hour with you, and helping you grow your business, which by the way is my favorite thing to do on earth, that means I took an hour away from production, which means I took away an average of $18,000 per deal. So now I took an hour to help you, I'm losing 18 grand. So if you're investing time into others, you do not have to do agent attraction, but if you decide to do so, if you're already helping other human beings to succeed, because you all hold the knowledge for something, you know something I don't know, which means it's your duty to help another person learn that lesson so they don't learn it on their own skill. So now if you're going to spend the time and effort and share your skills and your hard-earned um, tricks of the trade, right, you need to get paid for that. But not only getting paid in the moment, but you need to get paid for the rest of your life. So that's why, for me, revenue share is a lot, well, used to be, the largest source of income, and it's passive. If you don't find a way to make money while you're asleep, you will work until you die, or in other words, you'll never be wealthy. This is a Warren Buffett quote. I went to a Tony Robbins seminar business mastery. I walked in there and thought I was all done in a bag of chips. I was like, I'm a owner. I already make multiple six digits. How much better could this possibly get, right? And I realized that all these millionaires are making money while they're sleeping. I was like, I need to make money while I'm sleeping. You need to make money while you're sleeping. Because we are all 20, 30, 40 something, right? And you're like, I can do this. I can do this for another 20 years. What happens when you're 67? What happens when you're chasing that next freaking commission and you're sitting at another freaking open house? Shoot me now. You're going to be so peopled out by then and so egoed out and so bottom lined out and you spend 20, 30, 40 years of your life and you have nothing to show for. So figure out how to make money in your sleep. Let me ask you this question. I also learned this. It blew my mind at a Tony Robbins event. This guy was on stage, the most energetic person you ever meet, and he was so excited. He said, raise your hand, and I mean it. Raise your hand if you feel like most of the time you live outside of the box. Just three of us here, four, five, six, Rest of you live inside the box, okay? I was so freaking proud of it. I was like, me. Not only one hand, I was like two hands. I was proud, because I feel like I don't break the law, but I break the rules all the time. Do I push it? Absolutely. freaking good thing. I'd rather ask for, oops, sorry, forget me, then can I do it? So I was so proud of living outside of the box. Guess what he said? There is no box. The box that you think that you're living in, that you're not pushing the walls of it and you're not breaking the rules of that box, you put yourself in it. And you put the lid on it and you told the universe, this is where I fit in. This is my box. So if you wrote down your income goal for this year that I asked you to do yesterday, and you wrote down, I don't know, 500,000, 150,000, whatever that number is, that is your box and you created that limit for yourself. And the reason you put yourself in that box is because you believe that that's what you can do or cannot do. So when I created, the very first time when I created my $150,000 box, I was so proud of it. I was like, I'm gonna make 150,000 this year. 
Guess what I made that jerk? 156. Because when you say it out to the universe, the universe listens, literally listens to you. I promise you, it listens. I made 156,000. I learned two things. Holy shit, this works. I'm going to do it again. And then I learned another thing. Why didn't I ask for more? Now I know it works. And the only reason I didn't ask for more because I didn't believe that I can do more. And there's also this other thing, write these two words down and I want you to Google it or YouTube it and get to the end of it. What's your relationship with money? In my case, who am I to want more? 150,000, if I never left Romania, I would have probably spent a lifetime to make it and probably would have never reached it. Here I am making it in a year and I want more. Who am I to believe that I deserve more than my sister? You have the same mom and dad. I have no college education. Why on earth would I make more money? I'm a woman. I could continue with all of those reasons, right? So the box that you live in, you put yourself in it. You put the lid on it. And if you want to push the walls of that box, it's 100% your control. So the number you wrote down, how about double it? At least. You can absolutely. If you can do 150, you can do 300, guys. And if you can do 300, you can do 600. And if you can do 600, you can do 1.2 million. It's just what? Math. How about that one? Let that sink in for a minute. We all live in a cage with the doors wide open. And you choose to live in it. Because you're too scared to fly. And my last slide. If your goals don't scare you, they're not big enough. If you don't get chills, and oh, I don't know if I'm going to do that, but I'm going to do it because I'm never going to lose. And I do what I say. Write this one down, too. No plan B. From now on, you're only going to have plan A. Not only that, but your brain, as Tony Robbins says, it's a billion-year-old brain, it's here to protect you. It's going to give you a million reasons why you shouldn't do it. Don't jump, you're going to hurt yourself. But also, as Tony Robbins says, my brain doesn't tell me what I'm going to do today. I tell my brain what we're going to do today. Again, your income and your outcome is 100% your choice. Thank you so much for having me today.